Welcome to the Alphagenics podcast, where every week we speak to incredible guests from the world of health, well-being, longevity, and of course, men's health. And today I'm absolutely delighted to introduce the gentleman, the doctor who changed my life almost a decade ago, Dr. Bernard Willis. Welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you. I'm glad to be here. Happy to be here. Wonderful. And, and today we're going to be talking about a few subjects, aren't we? Anti-aging, obviously a big one. We were just talking off air there that it happens to all of us. What can we do to help it uh, reduce the effects on us, shall we say? Uh, and then also hormone interactions. And we'll probably touch upon adrenal fatigue as well. So where should we start? These are big subjects. Right, well, let's start with uh, anti-aging because, uh, you know, it's something that uh, I have a personal interest in. <laughs> and the older you get, the more interested you become in it. Isn't that true? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. When I talk about aging, I like to sort of um, just remind people of what uh, some of the elderly comedians have said about some of their remarks uh, that you might make you smile a bit. Um, uh, I don't know whether you know Bob Hope. Heard of Bob Hope? Bob Hope? Yeah. A comedian? Yeah. yeah? He once said that when you get to my age, the, the candles cost more than the cake, which I thought was quite good. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Betty Davis says that um, uh, ageing um, is not for sissies. I think that's very good. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. And uh, ageing is a, is a case really of, of mind over matter. If you don't mind, it doesn't matter. You know, um, the thing about ageing, if you, if you sit around and, and, you know, worry about, you know, worry about your aches and pains or think about your longevity then you you age quicker you know i'm i'm 79 now and i, I still i still do what i used to do when i was 45 and yeah. um you know uh, you just you just uh, ignore it keep going and um, you know hope for the best it's, but, a, it's, um, it's definitely a lot to do with mindset isn't it they've done some really fascinating studies where they recreated like people's work situations and home life from 20 30 years ago put a group of men together uh, and they actually started thinking differently, acting differently, metabolism changed. Um, it's quite incredible in, in this in this study. I can't remember where it was done now. Yeah, absolutely right. And, and uh, you know, what happens in your, in your personal life also is, a, is, is uh, uh, help you to age uh, healthily. I mean, uh, married men, for instance, live longer than single men, okay? And uh, yeah. say you're, you're okay there. Don't get divorced. <laughs> and um, and one of the other things that um, when we're talking about this kind of uh, thing is that um, loneliness is is a big cause of anti-aging and, and an early cause of death. So you need to you need to engage with people. You need to have a good um, relationship with you know someone you love, and you need to uh, do things. You know, I still go fishing. I play golf. I can't play tennis anymore because my back's not so good these days. But you've got to keep going and be active. And that's yeah. really what sort of uh, brings me along to um, the first um, uh, requisite of, of a healthy aging. That's exercise, you know. Uh, exercise um, lowers inflammation. It in increases our muscle strength. It helps our brain function. It lowers depression. Exercise is actually been shown in... in uh, in research to work better than Prozac. It is a, you know, uh, a way of getting endorphins into the brain and, and, and feeling good. Most of us feel good after exercise unless we've really ever done it, you know? Obviously, you know, weight bearing exercises there, um, squats, tightrope walks, sit to stand, all of these ones. And of course, taking weight through our legs as well helps to strengthen the bones because that stimulation increases the formation of trabeculae, which are yep. the things on the inside of our bones that keep us strong. And in addition yep. to that, of course, optimizing testosterone levels also increases bone density. So another Absolutely. reason why in men, and women. in men and women, yeah, of course. So another good reason why, you know, we, we need to look after our hormones. Um, but hormones do interact, don't they? And that was one of the other things we were going to talk about. Yeah, well, um, yeah, they do. Um... But I think I think the, the important thing about hormones is if that if you look upon them like a an orchestra, okay, yeah, and uh, an orchestra doesn't function doesn't play the tune properly if if one of them is out of tune, okay. So if one hormone crashes, okay, say it's estrogen, okay, yeah. and the rest of the hormones like like a sort of um, like a domino effect, they will all all crash down. 
because they the most uh, I think the, the most important hormone for interaction is cortisol. This is the stress yeah. hormone from the adrenal gland. Uh, if you if you if your cortisol gets cortisol gets too high from excess stress, then um, it's going to affect. It's going to lower estrogen levels, lower progesterone levels, lower testosterone levels uh, by interaction between uh, uh, the hormone uh, pathways. So and it's hormones are important to, to balance. It's got to be balanced. And of course, yeah. the problem with hormones is, is they've got to be um, um, even. If you have too much hormones, it's, it's, yeah. it's not good for you. You have too little, it's not good for you. It's a matter of getting the balance right with all of them. Yeah, and this is why I like, I like in my patient. I like to look at the adrenals. I look at the, I like to look at the pituitary. I like to look at the thyroid, and obviously the ovaries and the, and the, and, and the testes uh, as a package. Uh, which, which is what we do at Alpha Genetics. We, we do a, a full range of, uh, uh, of hormone uh, uh, levels in the blood. Yeah, yeah. I, lo I love that thought of it being like an orchestra, uh, where everything yeah. has to work together. And as you say, it needs to be needs to be balanced. Uh, you've obviously been treating for quite some time now, and have you noticed that adrenal fatigue, increased cortisol levels have increased over the last? few decades or oh, absolutely absolutely yeah. there's no doubt about that yeah it's a stressful world we live in i mean you know originally we talked about um um cortisol uh, secretion happening cortisol adrenaline uh, secretion happening if you're attacked by a you know a saber-toothed tiger you know mm -hmm. uh, it's the fear and flight reaction okay yeah um the type of thalamus sends a, uh, looks at the the tiger sends a, a message to the, the pituitary land which produces something called ACTH, which is a hormone that stimulates the uh, the adrenals. And the adrenals pour out adrenaline and cortisol. Uh, adrenaline increases the blood supply, the blood pressure goes up, and, and cortisol too. I mean, they, they're interacting together. And, yeah. and that gives you enough, um, enough uh, blood supply, enough oxygen to the muscles so that you can run. Okay, run away. <laughs> run away from the tiger. <laughs> yeah. Um, but of course, in the modern in modern times, we don't have sight of tigers to worry about. Okay. But you know, the stresses of everyday the stresses of, of, of you know driving appointments, work stress, uh, you, you name it. Um, we're all in our stress these days. And if it becomes too much, then uh, you get a constant sort of um, uh, uh, supply of cortisol and adrenaline, which uh, just wears you out and uh, uh, and after a while, that the, the adrenals can't cope with it anymore, and, and, and they sort of collapse. Adrenal fatigue is really a late term. It's not doesn't mean that the adrenal never get tired, but yeah. it's really a, a dysfunction in the in the hypothalamus pituitary um, um, axis, adrenal HPA. Hyper, let's get this right: hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis. And that, that's 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 what it's called. Yeah. Um, and so when when you get we we, we, we get permanent stress, you can call it burnout, call it what, what you like. Uh, then, then fatigue sets in because you haven't got enough cortisol drain to maintain you. What tends to happen, you tend to be, what, uh, after stress of the day, you tend to be tired and wired at night. You can't, you can't relax, you have to sleep. And then in the morning, you, you have, you've used up all your cortisol, not enough produced uh, between the hours of four and six, that's when it's produced. And, and so you wake up tired, okay? It's difficult to get out of bed. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, like, you you go to bed. Doesn't matter how much sleep you get, you still wake up feeling tired. Exactly. Yeah. And you have you have uh, swings and troughs during the day too. You normally have a, a sort of um, a dip before lunch, and then you have your lunch, and you feel better after lunch. Sometimes you can, uh, then find that you need a, a sleep in the afternoon. Okay. Yeah. And then as as the day goes on, um, you tend to get you know. Um, more excited as, as the evening comes on, then you find you're back in the back in the in the in the high cortisol levels again. You can't you can't sleep. That's what we call topsy turvy cortisol. It's too too much at, at, at nine, too little in the morning. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and that I guess become that's, a chronic state. Well, absolutely, yeah. And I guess um, there are a lot of people out there like that. And I, I remember when we met, and my yeah, my thyroid wasn't working properly. My testosterone was low. Iodine was, you know, nowhere near where it was supposed to be. And that drove me to all sorts of different behaviours. So I was eating chocolate, drinking diet coke, you know, drinking Lucasade like it was going out of fashion. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I remember talking to an NHS doctor who just said, "Well, it's nothing to do with what's going on." And you 
eloquently pointed out, it was entirely linked to what was going on inside my body because I was craving these energy sources that my body wasn't giving me. Mm. Well, you see, Ross, this, this sort of thing is not, not taught in medical schools, you see. Um, the whole time I was in medical school, the whole five years, I think we had um, about uh, one lecture on nutrition, five years, and one lesson mentioning hormones, and, and that was presumably that was sort of Addison's disease or thyrotoxicosis, you know, the, the severe end of the range of hormone problems. Now, yeah. No one mentioned sort of uh, how your adrenals can get uh, you, know, you get shattered or HPA access can, can be disrupted. Um, now, uh, the, the, the thing about medical schools, you, don't get me going on, I mean, I'll go on about this forever, but uh, uh, is, is they, they teach you about drugs, okay? They, they um, they, they take you through the pharmaceutical you know, uh, book of, of, of drugs and how to treat uh, how to treat um, everything with, with drugs. And at the end of the day, you get into general practice and you're lost. I mean, I, the first patient I saw uh, came in to see me. Um, I was about 21 at the time. And um, she had uh, a snotty nose. She said, I've got all this mucus. And I said, what? What do I do about that? No idea. <laughs> and I, had to, I had to ask the practice manager what should I, what I should uh, use uh, to treat her. And the second patient I had, it was about to start in general practice, uh, was had migraine. Again, I had, we didn't we didn't have these um, the modern drugs for, for you know when I first started. We didn't have these modern tryptan drugs uh, these days. But um, you know, I had no idea how to treat migraine. I mean, we know now that migraine is due to food allergy. You know, yeah. but. It, so uh, this is the problem I had, and as I, as time went on, I became more and more frustrated about not, not knowing the cause of things, just sort of uh, uh, reaching for the prescription pad and and, and and writing another drug, and then the patient came back saying, you just tell me the side effect from that drug, so you give them another drug to cover the side effect. Yeah. Yeah, um, and, uh, you know, I've always liked to listen to, to, to patients, and, you know, in general practice, generally it's 10, 15 minutes, is, you know, 10 minutes is, is not enough. You, you can't. You know, then we just sort of induce themselves. Induce themselves like that. Yeah. Uh, there's a, there was an old uh, GP back in the 18th century called, called Sir William Osler, who said that if you, if you listen to patients long enough, they'll tell you what's wrong with them. And if you carry on listening, they'll tell you how to treat them. So, yes. you know, listening listening is so much so important. This is why, I mean, you know, we have so much time with our patients that we, you know, now that we can, we can really... Get into the get into the cause and, and, and things because I'm into functional medicine as, as your previous guest was, and uh, in functional medicine you're looking for the root cause. You are, you know, you're not. Uh, uh, you're trying to get to the reason why this particular person is stressed or has a has a problem, and then you can uh, you know do everything you can to redress the cause rather than just to, you know uh, treat the symptoms. Yeah. Modern medicine is, is symptom control rather than you know root cause of things. It's like sticking a plaster on a broken leg, isn't it? It's, you, you need to actually go deeper than that. Uh, so yeah. what, what sort of things can people do if they are perhaps maybe aware they're living in a constant state of stress? As you say, you know, life nowadays is 100 miles an hour. We're, you know, we're husbands, fathers um, or, or wives. We've got busy lives. We're at work. We've got you know, all sorts of commitments. What, what sort of things can they do? Would you do you ever recommend things like meditation, mindfulness, yoga? You've taken the words out. You've taken the words out of my mind. All those three. Uh, <laughs> they've all been shown uh, scientifically in research to lower cortisol levels. Yes. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Exercise too. Uh, you don't have to, to, as I said before, you don't have to do too much in the way of exercise. Just uh, uh, enough to get the endorphins flowing. And you know, um, but of course, if, you, if you're feeling sort of burnt out, you don't really feel like exercising, do you? This is yes. this is the problem. Uh, and you, you, your diet's very important too with adrenal, with adrenal uh, fatigue problems because what it does, it, the, the, the fluctuating cortisol levels disrupt the blood sugar levels in the body. So you can feel sort of, you know, short of blood sugar, uh, you get hypo in the morning and then, you know, hypo in the afternoon, so you fall asleep. So what is the best thing to do for that is, is to have small frequent protein snacks. Have a little right. bit of snack for breakfast, maybe a boiled egg or something like that. Mid morning, have another protein snack, some nuts. Trailer, yeah. trailer mix is good. Have, have a protein lunch with say, you know, fish and salads or something like that. And then yeah. uh, another, another another snack at four or five o'clock in the afternoon, another protein snack, nuts or whatever. And then you have your main meal in the evening. Uh, and that way you're keeping the blood sugar. Protein um, keeps the blood sugar under level rather than carbs. You have a carb. If you have some cornflakes, 
which is actually worse than, than bread for putting your sugar up. Uh, your blood sugar will go up and then it'll crash down again. So, you know, you feel a bit of a high from the, the sugar and the, and the, uh, that's produced from the cornflakes and then you'll, then you'll have a low. So it, yeah. it's, it's very important to, to keep this, the blood sugar level throughout the day. Yeah, keep, keep it even. With, with that in mind then, where do you stand on the debate between plant-based and carnivore because at the moment there's like two camps both of them shouting you know theirs is right uh is there a right or wrong or are we are we all different and our bodies are different well i think that you have to have a mixture of the two i think um some of the most um, poorly patients i've ever dealt with have been vegans really yeah, yeah. it's been shown that they're, 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 they have uh, smaller brains okay yeah and um uh, and uh, they don't live as long. We need, I'm afraid we need meat um, in some form. We need healthy fats. I'm talking right. about you know, meat. I'm talking about um, fish, butter, right. eggs, you know, uh, cream, duck fat. Uh, because we know now that the, 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 the theory that uh, saturated fat causes is heart disease is, is rubbish. It's been refuted now. You know, yeah. it's uh, it was based on some very very um, uh, uh, flawed research back in the forties uh, from a guy called Ansel T. And then, of course, once it once it's in the in the mainstream, as you know, like lots of other things, you know, it never gets out of the mainstream. And yeah. and it, it, it's also it also produced a, a multi billion um, <laughs> uh, industry for statins, which as you know, love, yeah. and we know now that statins, if they're doing it at all, it's from their anti inflammatory effect rather than their uh, lowering cholesterol. We need cholesterol. If you look at the, the hormone cascade chart, it starts with cholesterol, and then it goes through to you know, pregnant alone and testosterone and DHEA and all the rest of it. Um, but without cholesterol, you, you're not going to produce as many hormones. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is why I, fi I find that there's lots of research that if you if you have low cholesterol as you age, then you die sooner. Wow. Okay. So yeah, so, cholesterol is important as 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 you age, particularly. So when you, when you look at someone's blood tests and their cholesterol is perhaps slightly out, you know, just just a few few percentage points, um, are you worried? Do you, do you want to see that coming down back into the green, or, do, or do, you know, do you not mind if it's slightly in the red? It depends on, on on the ratios. I mean, total cholesterol means nothing at all. You've got to look at the the HDL, the LDL, uh, and the triglycerides. Triglycerides, I think, are more important than cholesterol. You yeah. know, triglycerides come from sugar. You know, particularly fructose, and yeah. um, and and the triglycerides actually they inflame the arteries and and, uh, and and cause more problems than cholesterol. Um, so yes, I mean you know um, the the best diet for aging or for anything really is is, is I think is is the paleo ketone diet in some form or other, because you're having all the healthy fats. You take you're not having the the the, the, the grains grains. No grains. Uh, recent research shows that 40% of our diet comes from uh, uh, corn, wheat. 40%. Yeah, wow. And these days, of course, these days, of course, it's 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 not sort of wheat we had 100 years ago. It's all been genetically modified and uh, and grown on um, with fertilizers rather than the crop rotation we used to do in the old days. And so the food has probably got 50% less nutrients than it did when we uh, 100 years ago. So yeah. um, you know, if you cut if you cut the grains out, then what you're doing also, don't think every time you have a grain, whether it's a rice, pasta, you know, um, bread, whatever, it will go yeah. turn straight into glucose. Okay, and if you don't burn that glucose off, and that glucose will produce insulin. Insulin actually is secreted to to remove the uh, glucose and, and and turn it into the liver as, as glycogen. But after a while, if you keep going with the glucose, what happens is the insulin stops working. And the, the cells get sort of sensitive to it, and it doesn't work. And this is what we call insulin resistance. You've heard of this, have you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and this, uh, and this leads because of all the sugar in the blood. This leads to arteriosclerosis, um, you know, obesity, diabetes, you name it. Yeah. In fact, some well, some uh, right well. Sorry, Sorry testosterone optimize, optimizing testosterone again helps with this insulin sensitivity. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's all—it's all about getting the whole the whole balance together. It's just a, it, it, it's all about balance, really. Yeah. Um, and what That's what can, 
to happen with um, uh, with uh, uh, the, the paleo diet is that you're 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 swapping um, glucose as as a, a fat, as, as an energy level for ketones. Because if you cut the carbs out of your diet then, then, and, and eat fat, the fat will turn into ketones, which is, is wonderful brain food. Uh, the, the, the brain takes up uh, 20% of our en en of energy in the body. Okay? Wow. So it needs a lot of energy. And, and ketones are the best uh, source yeah. of that energy in the brain. Okay? If you have a, have you heard of, um, 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 what was the word? Uh, have you heard of having coffee with uh, in the morning with um, a lump of butter in it? Coconut oil or butter, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dave yeah, Osprey that... made that quite famous yeah. with his bulletproof, cost, bulletproof coffee. Bulletproof, that's the word I was looking for, bulletproof coffee, yeah. Yeah, yeah. well, that, one, that, will go straight to, that goes straight to the brain as, as fuel. So you, you'll be, uh, much, be much brighter that day, and, you know. Ah, probably okay. buy six more businesses that day than you would have done before. <laughs> oh, I've got to, I've got to ask you this question then. So, if a vegan has a, has a smaller brain, does the, does it still use twenty percent of the energy? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's all it's all proportionate. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I've got a few vegan vegan. friends. I can't wait to tell them that. <laughs> Back in the Neanderthal days, uh, when when we switched over to um, uh, to, to growing grains and and. Uh, and milking animals. Yeah, I don't know how you, uh, you you milk a buffalo, but never mind. Um, they the brain's got still get still got smaller. Wow! And, and actually, actually, the the the, the grain eating um, part of our our uh, human chain actually died out, and we're left with the uh, left with the carnivores or the omnivores uh, and we we thrived our heads our heads grew and, and we've become you know what we are today and yeah, this, yeah. this is the problem that we're going back to uh back to this terrible diet where you know we're not getting any any good fats and we, we need also we need the supplements as well because modern food is is, is so less nutritious than it was in your parents days and we need to had had the supplements in yeah, um, we've got off anti aging bit, haven't we? <laughs> so, yeah, we have a bit. I, I, I remember distinctly, you know, when we met, I mean, a, a decade ago, and um, you know, you did several things. You put me on a natural desiccated thyroid, not not a pharmaceutical synthetic one, and absolutely very important. Yeah. Very important. Yeah. And we supplemented selenium, iodine, um, and the big one was then you said go on a paleo diet, and. I did that for, for six months, didn't deviate, not even a day. And my health went through the roof. I went from feeling like I was about 100, no energy, sluggish, apathetic, brain fog. And six months later, I felt like I was about 18, you know, even though I was 35. It was really powerful. Yeah, that's what most people say who do the, the pay there. It's not easy to do because... Uh... You know, it's you have to really, really sort of think about it. You know, I mean, breakfasts are going to be uh, things like rather than you know, cereals and toast. You, know, you have things like uh, berries and coconut yogurt. I had that this morning, it's delicious. Or mm -hmm. you know, scrambled eggs and, and um, another one of my favorites is scrambled eggs and, and, and smoked salmon. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But um, so you don't. Uh, a lot of people on the on the on the paleo keto diet tend to take too much protein. And this is not a good idea because too much protein will turn into glucose by a process called gluconeogenesis. Yeah, it's hard to say with natural health teeth. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so uh, we need to get we need to get a you know the, the, about six percent fat, twenty percent protein, and the rest is save carbs. Carbs like you have you have your carbs from um, berries, okay? Particularly uh, you know. Um, Blueberries, blackberries, any any kind of berry is very good. Okay, yeah. and you also get your carbs um, from uh, sweet potato. That's good. Yeah. Um, and try any vegetables that actually grow above the ground rather than below, because the, the starchy ones tend to turn into glucose too. So you oh, want your okay. you want your lettuce, your broccoli, your, your sprouts, you know, your cabbages, that kind of thing. And in the winter, this is how we what we used to do. We used to eat seasonally. But nowadays, of course, we, we, with the world open with airplanes and all that stuff, we 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 get it all the year round, and that's not good for our system. So, so in the winter we, we had the we had the carrots and the sweets and the parsnips and you know, and the under the ground uh, vegetables. 
Yeah. So that's that's the way you do it. And you know, I've I had um, hundreds of patients who've who, who've really thrived on a, on a paleo keto diet. Um, you don't have to get something to ketosis. That's that's not necessary as long as you are. Uh, you're doing most of the things. I mean, we all still uh, have the odd sweet. I mean, what's your favorite sweet treat? Mine? Oh, wow. Yeah. I could eat chocolate biscuits all day long. If uh... That's funny. Well, my, mine, mine's chocolate hobnobs. I love chocolate hobnobs. That's mine too. <laughs> chocolate <laughs> hobnobs. It's like the perfect yeah. balance. You've got the chocolate, you've got the crunchy, oaty bit. Yeah, yeah, love it. Do you realize how good chocolate is for you? Have you, have you heard about it? That that it has to be sort of dark chocolate, though, doesn't it? Eighty five percent, eighty five percent cocoa. Yeah, not not cabbage yeah. jelly milk, but um, what that contains lots of um, antioxidants. You know, uh, cocoa cocoa flavonoids, which yeah. um, you know reduce oxidation in the body, um, help inflammation. And if you combine that with red wine, in red in red wine, there's a, there's a, a substance called resveratrol. Have you heard of that? I have. Yeah, I yeah. took that for for many years. Okay, um, doesn't, doesn't, yeah, it doesn't, it's hard to get enough by taking it. You know, you might either go take it for a 60 milligram capsule or, or seven bottles of wine a day, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, do you drink some red wine? I don't, I don't drink anything at all anymore. Um, okay, I did do, gave up a couple well, of years ago. Be, you must be minded what Frank Sinatra said then, you know, he said that, uh, I, I feel sorry for people who don't drink, but when, to, when they wake up in the morning, that's the best they're going to feel all day. <laughs> anyway, but I mean that's that's your personal choice. But I think you know a, a glass of red wine a day with some dark chocolate is, is good for longevity. And it's good for. Um, do you know about oxygen free oxygen free radicals? Um, Oxidation. By all, yeah, by all means, I think everyone would love to love to know more about it. Uh, okay. Well, um, when when you get a. Uh, a reaction with, with oxygen. Oxygen is, is essential for life, but it also kills us. Every breath we take is a step further towards death. Right? Um, because uh, when it reacts in the body, it, it, um, oxidation is called. Oxidation mm -hmm. is like what happens when um, you leave an apple, you know, cut, cut an apple, leave it onto the air, turns brown, and if yeah. you put a, you know, a rusty a, a nail in the in the outside, it'll, it'll turn rusty. That's oxidation. And that's what happens in the body. Okay. Um, and it's it's a cause of all kinds of, uh, of uh, illness. I mean, all the genetic, genetic illnesses are due to, to some extent, the oxidation. So where was I going with that? Uh, so yeah, so oxidation, oxygen. So um, uh, when you have a yeah, oxygen. When you have a reaction, you you leave uh, there's an electrolyte left over, which is called a free radical, and this can damage cell membranes and cause problems. Uh, it's also called uh, reactive ox oxygen species and uh, free radicals. They're dangerous. So uh, what, what you need is uh, try and get as many antioxidants in your food as possible. You've heard of antioxidants, for some Yeah, yeah. So that's like yeah. blueberries and things like that. Yeah, the rainbow diet. You know, as as many different things as you can. Uh, there's also a, a wonderful um, enzyme in the body called uh, antioxidant in the body called um, superoxide dismutase. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, this is the natural one we all we all produce, but you can't take it as a supplement. Um, other very good ox oxygen is resveratrol. We talked about that, and also glutathione. You know about glutathione? That yeah. seems to come up a lot lately. You see that popping up all over the internet. Yeah, it, it's a, a very powerful um, uh, antioxidant. And so there's something called astaxanthin, and you probably come across that too. That's another, that's another one. Yeah. These are all present in, in certain you know, uh, plants, um, but you can you, you can take them you know, separately. Um, so yeah, uh, that's the problem. Ox oxidation is a problem. Yeah, but we can't really we can't really avoid it. Thank goodness we uh, we, we developed this SOD, and um, that's the enzyme. Otherwise, we'd be dead by now. Wow. So. It's a bit of a double-edged sword. We we need it to yeah. survive, but then it's it slowly ages us as well. But the things we can do then, so what we've covered today, we've got uh, some form of exercise, although don't overdo it uh, as you do become more experienced uh, and start to age. And um, we've got to eat a, a healthy diet, whole foods. Uh, a paleo one would be preferable, uh, unless I guess you have any intolerances to be mindful of. Um, yes, I mean, one of the most, uh, one of the most uh, um, common uh, intolerances are, are gluten and dairy. 
we often find if you get a severe sleep patient, you take them off that, then both of those and they, they often improve. Wow. Actually, you made, I thought about that earlier when you said your very first patient was full of all mucus. Now, da dairy intolerance causes that, doesn't it? Absolutely, yeah. I think yeah. a lot of that. In those lot. days, uh, nowadays we can test for food, food, food allergens, but uh, I mean, back in the day, and we're talking about the dark age, you see, we didn't have, you know, we didn't have a mobile phone, we didn't have digital cameras, we didn't have yeah. laptops. I don't know how we, how we survived, really. <laughs> yeah, it, it was very different, wasn't it? And I remember when I was, when you know, again, back when I was a physio and reading something then, so this was a long time ago, saying a lot of childhood asthma was wrongly diagnosed in the past. And actually they Absolutely. were just dairy, dairy intolerant lactose. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That's the first, first thing you do. Okay. Um, and in those days we used to write letters and telephone people. Yeah. It's dropped, <laughs> dropped out. <laughs> yeah. Not, not anymore. I did speak to someone the other day and they still had a fax machine. I was like, well, who, who do you fax what? though? Like, What's yeah. that? <laughs> yeah, where, where does it go? Um, surely there's nobody else who's got one. Um, so, we've got to, so we've got to eat right. We've got to uh, exercise. Uh, nothing wrong with a little bit of alcohol, red wine, full of the on antioxidants to slow this uh, oxidative stress. And um, paleo diet. What, what about, uh, oh, and you mentioned uh, yoga, mindfulness, good for calming the mind, balancing out the adrenals. What about uh, sleep? Because sleep popped up a few times in terms of when we're, when we're unbalanced. How can you improve it? Would, would you recommend anything like melatonin or to, to balance your sleep? Yeah. yeah, you tend, you tend obviously the, the sleep deprivation goes in with, uh, with high cortisol levels in the evening. And, you know, first thing I do, um, if somebody who's not sleeping is to do to do a, a, a saliva salivary cortisol test during the day. You you test it um, you know, saliva into a tube uh, just an hour after waking. Okay, mm -hmm. um, two o'clock in the afternoon, four o'clock in the afternoon, and at eight o'clock at night. And that gives you a, a you know a graph during the day of what the cortisol levels is. Are. And very often in this situation, when you're sleep deprived, then um, you are going to uh, you're going to have high levels in the in, at, at night. And what, what you do for that, there are lots of good supplements. Now, melatonin is, is the sleep hormone. It's yet yeah, excellent. Uh, but some people get side effects from it, so you have to be it's not very slow. Some people ah, get okay. weird, dream, weird dreams on it. Uh, melatonin is also a very good anti-aging and anti, uh, antioxidant too. So it's, it's good to take. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, when, I, when I had my clinic in, 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 in Spain, I used to treat cancer patients with uh, high doses, 50 milligrams of melatonin is a high dose. It has a it has a wonderful sort of anti anti cancer effect. Um, yeah. Other things, you could, yeah, but there are some wonderful supplements. The thing's called um, uh, adrenal adaptogens. Have you heard of these things? No. Um, the, the, these are supplements you can take to um, actually uh, lower the cortisol if it's too high and raise it if it's too low. They, in other words, they're adapting the dose. I, I mean, you know, you know yourself. Um, one of the best ones is uh, ashwagandha, which is fantastic. Ah, right. I didn't know that's what that did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you've also got um, various kinds of uh, ginseng, also um, licorice root. Um, yeah, actually, actually raises cortisol in the morning. It's very, very good for that. Um, you have to be careful when you prescribe them because some of them actually uh, raise cortisol and some of them lower cortisol. They don't all, you know, have a balanced effect. So you've got to choose the ones that uh, you know. Are going to raise it in the morning and, and lower it at night otherwise they're going to be upside down and that's uh, sleep i sleep doing their, their work and awake at night um yeah so uh, the, the other one um i think you can do with that is, is to uh, is to make sure they, they, they can meditate before they go to sleep that's excellent uh okay yeah so it's so calm yeah. the mind yeah prepare yourself for sleep yep um so i think i think uh, if if you uh, if you've got a dream fatigue and you you watch your blood sugar, you control your blood sugar. Um, take some of the supplements that um, I recommend in the morning, and and the lowering ones at night, and and make sure you you, know, you eat regularly. Um, uh, then you're doing what you can. Really. If it, obviously, the other thing you can do is try and remove some of the stress from your life, which is probably the hardest bit to do. Yeah, look yeah, at look at. Please. Look at your appointment calendar and, and see whether you can trim it and give yourself a bit more, a bit more me time. Yeah, and that, that makes sense. Um, and probably sounds it's probably quite a 
good sort of time to finish with us talking about the, the supplements. So can you give us your top five supplements for anyone who's listening? Okay. Uh, for anti-aging, generally? For anti-aging, yeah. Okay. Uh, the first one I would suggest is carnosine. Do you know carnosine? No. Okay. Carnosine is... Um, uh, is an amino acid well it actually does it, it um when you have a, a, a glucose um too much glucose it can actually turn into things called uh, ages funny enough age you know that's it <laughs> advanced glycolation uh, elements okay okay and what that uh, carnitin does it mops up these you know the, these elements so they don't cause damage right? obviously then um, omega-3 very important anti yeah. anti-inflammatory and also feeds the brain cells um, coenzyme Q10, yeah. Do you know that? Yeah, yeah. coenzyme Q10 is, is very good for energy, it helps to um, produce energy for the little, um, uh, little ATP cells, little, little energy cells in the mitochondria. Yeah, yeah. yeah. um, what are we, um, zinc, very important. The zinc is, 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 is um, uh, great for immunity, it's good for the bone function. It also is a it reduces estrogen if you if you're male. Just a, it's a, it's a, a aromatized inhibitor. Yeah. All, all men with testosterone treatment should should take zinc um, as, a, as, a, as a routine because you know it means they need less of other things. And, uh, we, as you know, AIs can be either um, pharmaceutical or, or, or natural. I, I myself prefer natural AIs, but uh, you know. Um, the, the, um, the pharmaceutical ones they, they do work and uh, if you if you titrate them properly then of course it's side effect and they, they do a good job yeah so uh, mm -hmm. going to well, well, I'll still say resveratrol I think is right yeah resveratrol okay resveratrol because I, I think you know uh, the evidence is good that they gave resveratrol to, to mice and, and they they live 20 percent longer you know um, but the problem is that they they can't find out what dose we need for resveratrol this is the problem. Yeah. Probably uh, not the same amount as the bison, I would suggest. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're massive, aren't they? I mean, their yeah. face is about four feet long, a, bi a bison. They're huge things. Okay. And and then um, hormones, of course. I don't know whether that counts as a supplement, but hormones, uh, hormone balance is, is good. Get, get your, uh, your testosterone, your progesterone, estrogen, cortisol, um, all in the thyroid, all in balance. Um, because yeah. as I said before, you know, one of them goes out of step, you, you know, you're in trouble. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, I guess it's that orchestra. And and I know, it sorry. No, I was going to say it's that orchestra again, isn't it? It's, it's keeping it balanced. Yeah. That's really, really helpful. I think everybody also needs a good multivitamin. Yeah. Uh, the one yeah. I, pr I prefer is made by BioCare, and it's got a, a, a wide range of, uh, of things in uh, magnesium, very important. Uh, so you need to magnesium. You, you need for your uh, energy, you need for, uh, for your bones, for your heart. It's uh, one of the treatments for, for um, uh, a rapid heart rate is magnesium. I used to have magnesium. Somebody came to my clinic uh, with uh, atrial fibrillation, with the heart sort of racing, uh, you know, very uh, irregular. We used to give intravenous magnesium, and it stopped it. Yeah. All right. Okay. You don't yeah. always need drugs. You, you know, the, the drugs and medical medical mistakes are the third most common cause of death. You know that. I do. Heart. It's quite scary. Heart quite heart. scary. Yeah, yeah, scary thing, isn't it? Um, so but as you that in New York, it's equivalent to about two hundred fifty people dying every day in New York. Wow. Now, that's 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 like a jumbo jet collapsing out of the sky and killing everybody. Imagine what the fuss would be if a jumbo jet fell out of the sky, you know, every day. You know, but there's no fuss about you know drugs and doctors, no. Yeah, right, isn't it? I think the average American takes something like eight, eight pharmaceuticals by the time they're about fifty. Yeah, fifty percent um, of Americans are on drugs. Your medication. Yeah. I think it's about statistic, isn't it? About forty percent here, I think. Yeah. Wow. Well, Bernie, it's been an absolute pleasure. The end. Yeah, oh, I think I think we've got some we've got some amazing things in there. I'm sure people are going to be going away and googling I these things. Started, really. <laughs> <laughs> We could talk. We could talk forever. Uh, I'm sure, yeah. but we'll have to get you back on again and, and cover some more ground. 
But it's been, yeah, tr- truly a pleasure to have you on. I shall let you crack Thank on you. with your really, day. I really enjoyed it. I mean, I, you know, um, at my age, I've got, so, I've got so much knowledge in there that I need to pass it on before I, I leave this mortal core, which I hope will be a few more years yet. <laughs> I hope so too. Have a lovely That's evening. Good. Take care. Thank you. Thanks, Roy. Uh, Roy Ross. Bye for now. <laughs>